So chapter five is all triangle stuff. We're going to learn a few different important points that we have to be able to find with triangles. And the first thing we have to understand are what are bisectors again? What does it mean to bisect? Cut it in half. Cut it in half. So what is a perpendicular bisector? A perpendicular so it cuts a line segment in half. And it's perpendicular. So this would be a perpendicular bisector. It'd have to have a right angle, and we would have to know that this side and this side are congruent, right? All right, so there's this perpendicular bisector theorem that says if I have, let's put some points on here. Let's call this A and C, and we'll put B here. Would you agree that B is the same distance away from A and C? Like that's what bisecting means, right? What do you th also think is true about that point? Can we say that that point, we'll call it D, is going to be the same distance away from A and C? Would those two be the same? How would we know, or could we write a proof, some of us could write a proof, could we write a proof that that segment and that segment are congruent? How? How would I know that those, like, could I prove that those two triangles are congruent? By what theorem? Think side, angle, side, 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 side. What do you got? How do you got side, angle, side? You got a pair of sides. You got a pair of angles. The BD, they share a side, so reflexive, right? So because they of this, we have a pair of sides, a pair of angles, a pair of sides. That's side angle side, and then CPCTC that would give us this segment and this segment. The perpendicular bisector theorem basically says this: if you have a perpendicular bisector. Any point on this line, doesn't matter if it's here, 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 or way up here, or way down here, doesn't matter, that new point will be the same distance away from A and C. Easy? And the way you do it is, again, always just going to be side angle side. Simple? Not, like kind of? The same as B? So, no, the distance from A to C and A. So this point down here will be the same distance away from C as it will A. This segment will be the same as that segment. Any point on the perpendicular bisector will be the same distance away from those. Simple? So that's the perpendicular bisector theorem. All right, let's take a triangle now. Any triangle. How many sides does the triangle have? Three. Three. How many perpendicular bisectors could I draw? Three. Could I draw a perpendicular bisector for each side? Yes. So what I would have to have is I'd have to find the midpoint. Is that about the midpoint? About there? Yeah? Yes? Sure? Okay. And then I could draw the perpendicular bisector, which we'll draw a dotted line. And try to draw this as good as we can. A little off. Is that a right angle? Yeah. Pretty close? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Now, this is just a rough sketch, so, you know, got to bear with me. This is the perpendicular bisector. We'll change color. We'll make that orange or whatever that is. That's more of a salmon. Okay, so this segment is the perpendicular bisector of BC. Yes? Okay. Now let's do the same thing to AB. So AB is going to be about here. Yeah? Okay. And then we'll draw the perpendicular bisector. Is that about a right angle? To the AB? Oh. Are right there? Yes? Okay. We'll extend that a little bit. K 
Okay? And then we'll do the perpendicular bisector of AC. So where's the midpoint? About here? About there? And then that looks like it's going pretty much straight right and left, right? So we need one that's pretty much going straight up and down. So it's going to look like about that. Yes? Now, what should happen, or what do you think should happen with all three of these perpendicular bisectors? They should meet. There's a term, it's called concurrency. Concurrency basically means three or more the same point. Okay? They're, they're, they're concurrent. The point of concurrency would be the point where they intersect. Okay? Now, this point, all triangles, if you find the perpendicular bisector of all three sides, they will always meet at a point. Now, sometimes they will meet inside the triangle like this. Sometimes they will actually meet on a side. Sometimes that point ends up being outside the triangle. Uh, everybody take a look at page 326. You'll see kind of a sketch of what I'm talking about. This point in a triangle where the three perpendicular bisectors meet, that's called the circumcenter. If you look at the top of page 326, that circumcenter, depending on what type of triangle you're dealing with, that might, if it's an acute triangle, that circumcenter will always end up being on the inside of the triangle. If you're dealing with an out, obtuse triangle, it's going to be on the outside. And if it's a right triangle, it will typically end up being right on that triangle. So... Why did my circumcenter almost end up being right on that line? Yeah, angle B looks like it's almost a right angle, doesn't it? So because that's almost a right angle, that point ended up being almost on that line. If I would have made that more of an acute angle, it would have ended up being more on the inside. And if I would have made that more of an obtuse angle, that point would have ended up down here. Make sense? Easy? So if, if anyone or if you ever have to find the circumcenter, well, how do you think we define the circumcenter? It's just the point where what? All three perpendicular bisectors <laughs> intersect. Okay? Simple? I will warn you right now. Everybody, real quick, take a look at page, I'm going to fast forward and just kind of tell you what we're going to be doing for the next few days. Everybody take a look at page 339. We're going to build up to this page, but all I want you to understand is look on the right side. In the next few days, we're going to talk about circumcenters, incenters, centroids, and orthocenters. They're all different kinds of center point almost. You can almost think of, they're different ways, different important points of a triangle. Right now, the only one we've talked about is circumcenter. But basically, what you have to understand about circumcenters is how you find them. Okay? Easy? Yes? We good so far? All right, let's keep talking about circumcenters. Let's go back to page 325 is where I want you.
All right, so there is this circumcenter theorem, okay? And basically what this says, we know in this triangle, this point is called a circumcenter, right? We know that this segment is congruent to this segment, yes? Because this is a perpendicular bisector, right? This segment bisected that side. We also know that this segment here is congruent to this segment here. If we break it up like that, because that line bisected that, yes? We also know that this segment over here is congruent to this segment over here. But there's another theorem that basically says if you take that circumcenter and you draw a line, well, we'll do solid lines, connecting this point to all three vertexes. What do you think is now true about all three of those lines? They are equal to each other. What's that? The white ones. So once you find that circumcenter, we'll call this point P. Okay? We'll call that point P. That circumcenter is point P. We know that from P a, that's going to equal the same thing as PB. That's also going to equal the same thing as PC. If you know it's a circumcenter. That's, that's the circumcenter theorem. Okay? That's kind of the, that's how we're going to end up using the circumcenters. If you know it's a circumcenter, then you know this segment up here is congruent to this segment down here, which is congruent to that segment down there. Make sense? And that's true whether it's an acute triangle, an obtuse triangle. So if I take an obtuse triangle, like this. Well, let's do a weird one. Let's do a little short side there. Okay? Okay. We'll call this ABC. Okay, what's that? All right, so first thing I do is find the circumcenter, right? Where's the midpoint of AC? Right there? Pretty close? Yes? Okay. Tell me when I'm... Looks like a right angle here. We'll do salmon again. Is that about a right angle? left right there now there is ways and we can we are going to construct these later there is ways to actually do this precisely right now we're just kind of estimating right okay where is the midpoint of BC right about there yes so draw my perpendicular bisector so where's my right angle about there yeah About there? Yeah? Close enough? Okay. So, this should end up being our circumcenter, which means if I find the midpoint of AB, which looks like it's about, about there? Yes? Okay. And I draw a right angle from there, it should go right through that point. It's close. But if that is a circumcenter, what should be now true about the distance from there to there versus the distance from there to there versus the distance from there to there? All three of the yellow lines should be equal to each other. Okay? That's the characteristics of why it's nice to have a circumcenter. Okay? Make sense? So right now, perpendicular bisector. Do we know what a perpendicular bisector is? What's perpendicular bisector? Cuts a line right in half and forms a right angle, right? What's the definition of a circumcenter? 
Like, how do you find a circum center? What do you think, Alex? How do you find the circum center? How did I find this point down here? How did I find that circum center? All the what lines? So the circum center is where all the perpendicular bisectors intersect. Yes? Now, how can we use a circum center? Like, how do we, what special characteristic do we know about the circum center? That that point is going is gonna to always end up being what? Equal distant to all three vertices. Cool? Yes? We good with circum centers? All right. A couple of very basic questions I want you guys to be able to answer. Take a look at page 329. This is using that perpendicular bisector theorem, where if I have a perpendicular bisector, this point should be equal distant from the two endpoints, right? Okay, look at number one. Zx is a perpendicular bisector, right? Okay, so how big is xw? 12. Easy? How about number two? AC, 14? Yeah. yeah. How about number three? How, big, how would you find LP? Set what equal? 10x minus 5 and 7x plus 1. Subtract the 7x over here, so you'd have 3x. Add the 5, so you'd have 6. So x equals 2. Then what do you got to do? Plug it back in. Which one does it want us to shouldn't really matter, but that's this one. So you'd go 2 times 10 is minus 5, 15. What would you get if you plugged in over here? 15. Either way, you get Yes? Easy? So far, so good? Questions? Are we good with circum centers? Because I do want to talk about in centers too. It's another type of point. What's an angle bisector? Bisects an angle, right? So if I take any angle, where's, an, where's the angle bisector going to be? It's going to cut that right in half. Yes? Okay. Okay. So we know those two are con congruent to each other. We're getting there. We're getting there. Now, there's an angle bisector theorem that's going to help us. And what that means is if you take any point on that angle bisector and you measure the distance that that point is away from this line. Now, how do you measure the distance away from a point to a line? What is the what kind of an angle does that have to be down here? That's got to be a right angle, okay? So that distance and this distance. So let's give these some points. A, B, we'll call that C and D. What do you think is going to end up being true about B, C, and B, D? They are equal, okay? Any point along that angle bisector, if you do the same thing, if you measure that distance, that's a right angle, and you measure that distance, well, it's not a very straight line, those are going to be congruent to each other. Simple? That's true for any angle bisector. Okay. So how do we use that with a triangle? Well, if we take any triangle and we draw three angle bisectors, okay? Tell me when I'm in the middle of that one, you think. 
By there. Up a little. That cuts that in half. So we know this little angle down here is congruent to that little angle there. Yes? Okay. We do the same thing here. Cut that in half. About there? Yeah? Do you think they should all meet at one point? Yeah, they should. If you do it accurately, we did not do it very accurately. We, what's that? This one's off? That a little better? I think this one's got to go up a little bit too. That's better. Yeah. They should. If you... If you find all three angle bisectors, they should and they will meet at, w at one point of congruency. That point is known as the in-center. Okay. So what was the circumcenter again? Where all three perpendicular bisectors meet. So what's the definition of an in-center? where all three angle bisectors meet. Now, here's the nice thing about in-centers, is if you find the distance, this point is away from all three lines. Again, that should be a right angle with that side. What's going to be true about all three of those green distances? They are going to be equal. So, what I need you to understand in today. Number one, perpendicular bisector theorem. This one is a very useful theorem to us. Where if I have any point on a perpendicular bisector, those two sides are going to be congruent. Okay? That theorem ends up giving us circumcenters. And all three of those, once you know that, that distance is going to be the same to the points. When you do the angle bisectors, okay, that's going to be the same distance no matter where we are. And then once you find the in-center, that in-center is going to be the same distance to the sides. Make sense? Okay. Take a look at page 329 again. Take a look at number 8. That's an angle bisector, right? We know that BP is an angle bisector. So how would I find C, CP? It's eight. It's got to be the same as AP. Okay. How about number six? How would I, if I know that angle XYW is 23, how would I find WYZ? Doesn't have to be 23. Because be, it's got to be an angle bisector. Okay. And then how would I do number seven? Set them equal. Okay. Are those kind of questions easy? Yes? Okay. Turn the page. Most of these are going to be the same as those. The hard ones are going to be when you get down to number 27, where that's an in-center. But keep in mind... What should be true about BP and FP and PD? They should all be the same. So if you can find one, you should have all three, right? You may need to use Pythagorean theorem in there. Yeah? Maybe? Yeah?